Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're tuning in from. I'm Bruce Delmonico, Assistant Dean for Admissions here at the Yale School of Management. I want to welcome you to our online student panel today. Uh, and I uh, hope you have uh, are having a great day. And hope for, hopefully this, uh, this event will help contribute to that. Uh, uh, we have with us four current students here at the Yale School of Management. And the idea for today's panel uh, is just to get give you more of a sense of the student experience here, um, what student life is like, uh, a little bit more just about our, st our students themselves. Uh, we have uh, set aside 50 minutes for this session. So it's noon here, US Eastern time. We should be finished by 12.50. Um, I will, you know, I have some questions to ask the students, but we really want this to be driven by your questions and your interests. So please uh, use the, the um, I believe it's the so chat feature of the, of the uh, Zoom uh, session to submit your questions uh, and we'll try to get to as many of them as possible. Um, so and without, uh, so just, and I, before then, I have just a sh very, very short, maybe two, three minute, hopefully, um, just a few uh, quick presentation about the school just to help serve, get, make sure you understand a little bit more about what's distinctive about the School of Management. Um, but I wanna keep that brief and get to the questions as much as possible. Um, and, and in that vein, I would love it if, uh, if the students could each uh, introduce yourselves uh, so that we can, you know, all of you participating can know a little bit more about who's on the panel today. We have, uh, so Ruben, Locke, Shruti, and, and Selena. I uh, wonder if you could each just could just say a few words just so everyone knows uh, sort of uh, who you are. And maybe sort of, uh, I, I see uh, Selena, you're, you're first uh, below me on my on my Zoom screen. So, so I'm uh, sorry, you, you drew the short straw. If you wouldn't mind starting, that'd be great. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Selena. I'm a second year in the MBA program here at Yale. And um, before school, I was in technology consulting, mostly working on change management and communications initiatives with um, federal clients. And um, after school, I'm hoping to go into human capital consulting or maybe some sort of internal human capital strategy role at a firm. Um, and then Locke is next on my screen. Awesome. Hi, Lok Bao. Um, I'm originally from Vietnam, but I grew up in the United States in California. Um, went to school at West Point and I spent eight years in the U.S. Army after um, graduating. Um, and then I also spent about another year nonprofit before I came to SRM. Last summer, I spent my internship at GE Renewable Energy, um, but after I graduate, I'm going to be joining IBM as a corporate strategy consultant, kind of internal consulting. So definitely would love to talk about that if you, if you guys have questions there. And then I'm going to hand it off to Ruben because he's next. Awesome. Thanks, Locke. Um, so hello, my name is Ruben Munoz. I'm a second year MBA student, um, like everyone on this panel. Um, in terms of what I did before business school, I was in asset management. So I worked at Newberger Berman um, and been in finance for six years before business school. Um, ultimately, over the summer, I decided to intern at Apple. Uh, but going post MBA, I'm looking into consulting. And Shriti, I think, is next. So. Hello, all. Uh, Shriti Lekha. I grew up in India and uh, did consulting for four and a half years before coming uh, to Yale. Um, in the four and a half years, my consulting experience was split between commercial consulting at BCG and uh, federal consulting with the government of India. Um, I, in my summer, I spent time doing uh, marketing and sales for Unilever and then moved on to work with a startup based out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, very excited to uh, talk to you all today and answer your, some of your questions. Great, thank, thank you so much, Lok, Selena, Ruben, and Shruti for, for the, those introductions uh, and for being part of the panel. I know you're all very busy, so I really appreciate you taking the time. Those introductions felt a little bit like self-graduation. I mean, one of the unique features of us SO, at SOM is the students actually announce each sort of other's names at graduation and that sort of took on Felt a little bit like that when I, I got up going, but the students just took over. Uh, so, so thank you for those introductions. I do wanna, as I said, do wanna save as much time for questions as possible. One correction, please, uh, if you could send your, your questions through the Q&A feature. Um, I said chat, but I meant q and I apologize for that. Please do that. Uh, like, as I said, we'd like to get to as many as possible. Before then, I just wanna give a very, very brief overview uh, of the Yale School of Management um, to, to make sure that uh, you all have sort of good grounding on, on sort of what we're about here at Yale. You should hopefully see now that the, the slide that's visible is uh, states our mission to educate leaders for business and society. That's the founding mission of the school. It dates back to the, to the, the very earliest days of the School of Management. And I think it really speaks to our sort of broad 
uh, multi-sector approach to management. Uh, we are, you know, we, we educate leaders, not just for the private sector, but, but for the public and nonprofit sectors as well. Uh, we expect, and, and, and many of our students and graduates do have that broad view and they, they move rather nimbly across and among the sectors. Uh, and the idea is that uh, uh, it has, uh, there's a number of implications uh, for the mission and what that means. Um, and it's, uh, I think one thing is that we do very much uh, expect our, our graduates to think not just about the kind of benefits that they can accrue to themselves, but the kind of impact they can have on their organizations, their communities and the world more generally and thinking very broadly about what, what that impact uh, is. As a personal note, I can say I've been at the school for over 15 years. Um, I, you know, I was attracted to the school because of the mission uh, and I've stayed at this school because people really, you know, students, faculty, staff, everybody really does live that mission. It does animate what we do here at the School of Management. Uh, and I think that's a very uplifting, very powerful thing. Um, in that, that vein, I'd love to, to talk just very quickly about, uh, I think, three ways uh, in which that mission lives uh, uh, at the school right now. And three ways in which when you come to Yale as a student, um, the, the, the mission through these, these, these uh, uh, aspects of the program will, will really inform and influence your experience. Um, the first is our integration with, our, with Yale University. We, we feel we're the most integrated business school to our home university. It's wonderful to have a university like Yale to integrate into. Uh, uh, but I think as a student and home, our students might be able to, to speak to this uh, during, during today's session, as a student that takes on many different forms. One example I would point to uh, is that uh, you know, we are a two year full-time MBA program. The first year is largely the core. You start to take electives in the spring and then the second year is entirely electives. And you can, at Yale, you can take those anywhere at the university without limit. Uh, I think that's really powerful to be able to draw off of sort of the law school, uh, public health, forestry, I guess it's the Environment School now, uh, International Affairs, Yale College, uh, in terms of crafting your, your sort of personal uh, sort of academic experience. That also, the, that integration applies for you programmatically as well in terms of uh, different, different activities, different centers, you know, Psy City, the Center for Innovative Thinking at Yale, so spans the university, there are other university-wide initiatives uh, that our students plug into. Um, and then certainly as an alumnus or an alumna, What's nice is that you can you get access not just to the Yale SOM alumni network, but to the entire university alumni network. So they're really sort of powerful ways in which you're able to, to leverage all the opportunities and, and that Yale has available to you. Um, the second distinctive feature is our, 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 our global posture, our global footprint. You know, a lot of US business schools talk about being global. And right now during the pandemic, which I'm sure we will talk a good bit about, you know, what that look, look, looks like and what that means is, is different. Uh, and, and I think it's very much attenuated. But you know, uh, you know, once this 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 moment has passed, uh, and preceding this moment, you know, we have carved out a very distinctive global posture uh, for our students, and and we were the first top business school to have an international experience as part of the required MBA curriculum, um, and we've you know, as a school, we've expanded the the those options and that menu of offerings to not just be a school-led international experience, but to really leverage what we call our global network for advanced management. I say ours because we're what, what, what we were the founding member. One of the founding members. It's really a a, a network of, of a, an equal network of 30 top business schools uh, that provides opportunities for um, you know different, a number a series of uh, of, kind of more modular uh, experiences, week long courses, virtual courses, uh, other uh, you know other experiences. Um, we have semester changes. Uh, there are some courses here that are experiential and that, that that involve consulting projects uh, um, globally. Uh, for example, uh, social entrepreneurship in India class, our global social enterprise class. So there are lots of experience you know, opportunities to, to connect globally and to develop your sort of global mindset, which I think is an important part of, of being a, a, a business leader uh, in, in the 21st century and certainly being a, 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 a leader coming out of the School of Management here at Yale. And then the last thing I would point to uh, is our, what we call our, uh, our, our um, mission, you know, aspect of mission to educate leaders for a business society to, to be uh, to train elevated leaders across all regions and sectors, um, and that's really what we speak about in in that regard is our integrated curriculum. I talked about the core curriculum um, a minute ago. You know the way the Yale School of Management structures uh, our curriculum here is different than what you'd experience at other business schools. Um, we don't teach based on functional silos uh, with the way traditional business school courses and curricula are taught. Um, this the faculty here have taken that traditional curriculum and reoriented it uh, across stakeholder perspectives. So instead of those functional silos, we kind of cut across, the courses cut across those silos and try and teach in a much broader, more integrated, more multidisciplinary way. 
um, that we think is more relevant to how you will your, experience your careers and your professional lives now. You know, when traditional MBA curricula were initiated, you know, 40, 50 years ago, um, you know, you, you as an MBA graduate we would have a, you know, a very straightforward career. You go into a large multinational corporation in a single department and work your way up. Your, your careers don't unfold that way anymore. Um, you will need to be much more nimble. You need to see the bigger picture earlier. And that's how we teach. It's, as I said, it's much more interdisciplinary. Uh, there's team teaching, drawing not just from different parts of the school management, but other parts of the university. So not just business concepts, but psychology, sociology, political science, law, the environment, health. You learn all the, you know, you, all these disciplines will come to play. Um, you will learn by largely by case method, but these are um, cases uh, that are in, uh, there are some traditional cases, but some cases that are developed by our Yale case writing team, we call them raw cases uh, that we feel um, teach you in a much more real world way um, instead of what we call our, you know, the traditional cooked case of, a, of, a, of another MBA uh, curriculum that, you know, takes all the relevant facts and distills it down into, you know, a 10, you know, a, you know 10 to 12 page document. Um, you here at Yale will get all the raw materials, all the primary source materials you would get in the real world, and you have to make sense of it yourself. We feel it's much more realistic. It actually forces you to do the thinking yourselves because that's how you will experience information. And after you graduate, no one's gonna to come to you and give you a case and say, this is all you need to know. And you know what's the answer? You need to figure this out for yourself, understand how to resolve conflicts or make sense of uh, in, 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 inconsistent or incomplete information. So that's how our cases are structured. So that's a little bit about our, our integrated curriculum. Um, so those three things, our connection to the, our home university here at Yale, our global posture, and our, our sort of inter integrated interdisciplinary uh, curriculum, I think are three things that do make our, the experience here at Yale different. Um, that hopefully was not too, too long. I just wanna give a quick overview, a little bit of a sense, a little grounding of, of what, you know, what we're, we're about here at the School of Management. And now I'd just love to open it up to the students, to some questions. I'll start with a few of my own, uh, and, but I see there are lots of questions coming in from the participants and love to get those as, as soon as possible. Um, but start with maybe, you know, I was, I, as I, was, I will say for not every, not each of you has to answer every question, but for this first question, at least, I'd love to get thoughts from each of you on the simple question of why did you choose to, to join us here at Yale uh, for your MBA experience? Um, and based on this, I say, I'll start lock, you know, you're, you're kind of uh, upper left corner for me. So I'll start with you uh, this time around. Yeah, definitely. I think I'm gonna give you a practical answer. I'm gonna give you a holistic answer, right? And I think everyone's gotta start practically of where does your MBA want to take you and what do you want to do with it? And I think for me, um, just doing the research, looking at what companies recruit us and what industries go to recruit us on, checked all those blocks, right? You're going to have a, pretty much an equal opportunity to go to most of the top firms in the world that you're looking for and they will recruit on campus. Um, all that's checked, right? So once I kind of decided that, then it's really about being the culture, the people, and am I going to be comfortable there? Even more than what you can learn in school, it's just, am I going to be, um, comfortable being associated with the school long-term. And I think SOM really does check all that block um, of just having the kind of community that people just wanted to be associated with. And that really comes from the mission of the school to be a school for business and society. And I would say that that is a, it's not something we add on there, it's an equal part of what we do. And you're gonna see that resonate through um, everything we do here, whether that's the social impact clubs that we have, whether that's even in classes talking about um, every class will hit on really salient topics in today's world, like um, diversity and inclusion or sustainable supply chains or economic development. That's just not, you know, we think about that equally as we think about profit and losses and that we'll do that. But the most part is just the other people in the community here, like everyone here is driven, everyone's mission driven. We might not all be going directly into a social services or social impact sector. We're all, but we all have a driven uh, mission outside of just our business interests to do something better for society and the world. And I think, you know, everybody just has that, something that they care about, something they pursue, whether or not they're gonna do it in business or not, but it is definitely inspiring to me to do more. And just a real quick anecdote from um, like when the pandemic hit and we all started going online, I think it's just really encouraging to see how far us as a community, us as Yale and the students ramped up. Um, I spent a good chunk of the beginning of the pandemic when everything shut down, we were at home just watching Tiger King at home. I was like kind of ashamed because I've been seeing all my classmates um, doing stuff, getting into community or professors going on TV or writing articles about, you know, how we can um, approach the pandemic and um, get through it. And that really inspired me to do other things. So that's just kind of just the baseline of just how much people care about um, what's going for. And that's definitely something I wanted to be a part of. Great. 
Great, thank, thanks so much, so much luck. Uh, Shruti, would you mind going next? Sure. I think um, my reason for coming to Yale was, a, was very personal. For the two and a half years that I worked with the government of India, my mentor there uh, is a SOM grad uh, of 2013. And uh, he was my mentor for a large part of my uh, work life before coming to SOM. And I instantly knew that this is one place that I'm definitely going to apply uh, when I thought about my MBA. Um, following that, every year, um, or every year since when I decided I am going to go to Yale, I um, you would speak with current students or alums and always felt there was this sense of belonging to the Institute, to each other, to the community. Even now when I reach out to uh, SOM grads from 1999 or 2000, um, there is this prompt response from them, which uh, really warms your heart to know that there is this sense of belonging uh, across the years, across the batches. And that is something that I wanted to feel uh, as part of the community. And that was my reason for choosing Yale. Thank you so much. Ruben, would you be able to go next? Yeah, absolutely. So I would echo everything that Treethi as well as uh, Locke just mentioned. I think from my standpoint, um, just reflecting on my own personal background, I'm actually a first generation uh, college student. And so that has always been something that is a part of who I am in terms of how I, I, I have a personal outlook on things. And so when just hearing about the mission of Yale um, and educating leaders for business and society, that automatically was just like, you know, the most perfect fit um, where, you know, even when I was in finance before business school, um, I was working on Wall Street and that is stereotypically seen as, you know, people who are just willing to to do anything just for profit. And so I've always been the person who was always expanding the perspectives of people, even within my team, um, to think about what they could do to engage community involvement and things of that nature. So I, I like the fact that uh, Yale stood for that. And so that's what really attracted me to the school. And then most importantly, when I visited, um, seeing it actually validated by the actions of some of the second year students um, or the students at first years as well that were there that led me to certain events, even when I was just thinking about applying. I think that is just a, a, a very like actionable thing that you can see for yourself and know that it's not just a state admission in terms of wards, but it's actually lived by the students as well as the various departments at the business school. Thank you so much. And, and Selena, you went first last time, so I let you let you um, give you a break and let you go last this time. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. Um, I think similar to what everybody else had said, I think the business and society part was initially what first drew me to Yale. It's always been super important to me throughout my entire life to be able to give back to the community and to um, think of others when um, making decisions at work in my personal life. And so um, that's what really drew me to Yale first. And then, um, I think she froze. Oh, that's too bad. Too bad. Um, hopefully she'll, oh, there you go, back. Um, okay. Where did I cut off? I'm trying to remember the phrase. Uh, I think you finished your first, that was, you said that was first and then you were, then you froze. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so what kept me interested in the school was um, the community. And so the first time that I came up for a campus visit, uh, we were put into groups with uh, current students and I just saw that the number of people they saw in the hall they knew and that's what I really wanted for my experience just be able to get to know um, a good number of people in the class and um, I wanted to I attended a large school for undergrad and so I definitely wanted that smaller experience um, and just be able to uh, make deeper connections with everybody that I saw. Thank you all for those thoughts and those sort of initial you know, uh, responses in terms of sort of your, your thinking about why, what, what about Yale, you know, attracted you here to our community. Um, I do, I have a number of other questions that I have sort of prepared, but actually we're getting lots of questions in from, from the attendees. Uh, so maybe I just really turn to those first and so maybe I'll sprinkle in some of mine as well, just to, to um, as, as we go. Uh, and maybe start with, this is a little bit the elephant in the room. Uh, uh, one question that's come in, uh, maybe in a couple of different forms is given Given the uncertainty on whether things will get back to normal by next fall, um, can you talk a little bit about what the student experience has been like uh, in light of COVID? 
um, and maybe talk a little bit about if we have a, one or two of you could talk a little bit about what things are like now uh, in the in in you know in the uh, in the midst of the pandemic. I can start. And so I think the first big question is, do you feel safe, right? And I think that's what we have to answer first. And I would definitely say that I do, um, especially given this the effort and the expertise of Yale and Yale community. Um, there's ample measures being put in place to keep students safe. And we have within the past week switched into um, virtual learning just because of the change in the numbers. Um, but that's, that was a quick decision made in real time um, in terms of just being safe in the community, especially if you're a part of the Yale community, um, there's ample testing. So I, I went to California a couple of weeks ago. Um, I got back, I took two COVID tests within a week. There was no line, no wait. I just got to be able to get it done. Um, and then I feel extremely confident that if, you know, um, something was to happen or if I was to get sick, I would be fully um, trusting of Yale, New Haven Health and the Yale Swim community to be able to take care of me and feel safe. So that's the most important thing. Um, the downside, of course, is that everything's moving virtual. It is, it's what it is. I mean, and, um, and I, but I would also say like being virtual, the teachers and the professors that try their best to make it as engaging as they can. Um, they come up with innovative ways that we can interact, whether it's through breakout rooms, whether it's um, to polls in class, whether it's just to like um, send out your activities that you're gonna do at home and then reconstruct each other or just working on websites. Um, working together. And it's definitely a learning process. It definitely came through. I think like I can just see the effort that they put into it um, to make it as um, a, a better experience for all of us, given what we have. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, appreciate that response. Is there, is there, uh, I wonder, you know, obviously the classroom experience is one thing we had been, we started hybrid, we've been hybrid throughout the year and like to, to your point, you know, in light of the uptick in, in sort of cases going going virtual, just to uh, and, and to sort of keep everyone safe. Uh, there's also that, that co-curricular piece, and I don't know if any of uh, anyone else has thoughts about that aspect of it. Obviously, that's an important part of the experience too, and how that's been affected by COVID and and how you're you're you know working through that. I guess I can chime in. Um, so with regards to just the academics, um, I feel like in business school, there's like two kinds of, of courses. There's those that are more lecture oriented based, um, which could involve a lot of mathematical equations and things of that nature. And then there's some that are like primarily discussion like case based. And so, uh, and then obviously you have some that have a good blend of both. Um, so I feel like for this virtual format, it's been very helpful um, ironically to, to, to actually partake in those courses that are much more lecture based. Um, I feel like you're more focused. You have like the formulas right on your screen. It's like very visible and you can follow along very great. I think for the discussion based courses, you do miss that element of sort of the body language and seeing people interact or engage with like a topic that's occurring um, and even seeing the professor's enthusiasm. So I mean, they're also doing this from home as well. And so like, I feel that chemistry, which you can only experience it in, in like a classroom setting is sort of um, taken away as a result of just being virtual. Um, and then you, you, you ultimately, yes, you can you know, show people's faces, but that can be distracting when you're on Zoom and whatnot. But I think that is, is the element that, that is lacking, but um, everything for the most part, it's not like it's, it's hindering the overall academic experience from like taking away from the learning aspect. Um, you're still getting that experience and, and that's maybe my, my um, expectations, but I think it's just a matter of, of collaborating and, and just being in an in, in classroom um, discussion where you can have a much more interactive dialogue and, and, you know, challenging ideas as opposed to, you know, having to raise a hand through a virtual uh, format and just waiting for one person to, you know, finish their thought and just doing that in order as opposed to just all coming together and really, you know, providing ideas across different pers perspectives. Thank you so much. Um, you, you mentioned actually, you know, let's take a little bit of pick up on one thing you talked about, you, you're discussing sort of the classes and the cases and raw cases. And one of the cases, one of the, which, the raw case, which I mentioned, um, you know, earlier on in the program, we'll talk a little bit about the, the, the program and the overview. Um, and they're actually, uh, one of those, the participant questions actually has to do with the raw cases. Can you give, share an example of uh, an experience you had with the raw case, you know, how that played out, just to give us an insight into what that, what that looks like. Um, you know, uh, sort of on the ground. 
Yeah, I can go ahead with this one. Um, I think one of my favorite raw cases was the one about coffee beans and supply chains. And um, I don't, I don't really have any experience in either of those areas. And so it was really great to just be able to dive in and um, be able to learn pretty much everything you could want to know about coffee beans and how they make their way from um, where they're grown to eventually your coffee cup. And um, I think it definitely can be intimidating to see all these different types of materials. There's, you know, videos, PowerPoints, um, interviews, news articles, um, and then one overarching, um, I guess, article on a website that kind of guides you through all these different links. And um, I think, yeah, it's definitely intimidating if you look at it at first, but if you um, plan your time well and make sure that you get started um, a little bit earlier than maybe you would with a traditional case, like you definitely get a lot of, out of the experience and um, can definitely learn a lot as well, just about different parts of various industries. And I think that really enriches discussions in the classroom as well. There's a lot of people who have, of course, very different backgrounds and work experiences than I do. And um, I think having the raw case format gives them more of an opportunity to be able to speak to those experiences where relevant. And I'd love to, if I could pick up on that a little bit, because, you know, I know that, you know, the structure of the each class is that you're divided into cohorts of, you know, you know 65, 70. Um, so there are five cohorts in the class of 345, 350. Um, and then within each cohort, you're taking those classes together. You have learning teams of eight and then smaller teams of four. When you're, just to get a little more fine grain, when you're working on a, 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 a raw case, um, is that typically, you know, and you have assignments, is that something you're doing solo or are you doing them with your eight person team, four person team? How does that typically work or does that vary in terms of the experience, the learning experience and how you're interacting with, with your classmates? And that could be for Selena or for, for any, of, any of you to, to respond to. Yeah, I would say um, the, so when we have raw cases, it, they really work you into them. So a good chunk of your big um, classes, you'll take your first or second term of building the fundamentals that you're gonna be able to um, use late in the course. So a good chunk of your core, um, core cases that you'll get through or more towards the end, towards the executive class. Um, and by that point, you actually have all the expertise you need um, to actually dive into those cases. So by the time you get to executives, um, you'll just basically a capstone class um, most of those cases will be cold case, um, raw cases, and they're going to be asking you like specific, really odd questions that you never thought you can answer, like price the Norwegian wealth fund or um, evaluate this merger between a European and a Spanish, between a German and Spanish energy company, or like there's a um, help Alibaba find a proxy for credit, right, um, for rural farmers, and probably me at the beginning of the year would have no idea what to do. But as we went through the process um, for the classes, they build you into it. And by that point, within your small learning team, you all have the expertise that you need to solve those cases. So you're gonna go into the, look at those problems, you're gonna get a bunch of documents, but you actually have a very good idea of where you need to go to get the information that you need. And you'll be able to parse that and collate and bring that together and kind of shift to everything else you're seeing, right? Um, and then by the time I got to the end, like the initial learning team is set up where you do have different expertise um, within the team. So like for my learning team, we had an accountant, we had finance people, we had um, me that's been in the military. Um, that was really helpful. And then we helped each other a lot from the beginning core classes towards the end. We remixed the teams um, for executives, but it was okay because we all had the baseline expertise that those raw cases really um, were challenging, but we all were able to get through them. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'd love to, you know, keeping on the academic theme, we were talking a little bit about sort of the raw cases and the, 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 the curriculum here at SOM. Um, but I did mention, obviously, that one of the nice features of uh, and distinguishing features of, of the program is that you can take classes anywhere at Yale uh, without limit. Your electives are open, you know, the, all your electives are open to the entire university. And I'd love to maybe get an example or two from, from, the, from you about, you know, you know, what classes you've taken outside of the School of Management uh, and maybe if there are other activities you participated in outside of SOM, what, you know, what those have been more sort of university-wide activities. Yes, I could go with it. Um, I've been taking this um, computer programming course, which is very um, uh, popular amongst the 
uh, Yale SOM students specifically. It's with the, it's co-taught by the faculty of Harvard and Yale, and uh, it's called CPFC 100 at Yale. And uh, it's been really interesting because all my TAs are from the undergrad and uh, it's a lot of fun as a class. Um, I have never done computer programming in the past. And the last four months have been crazy, both in terms of the workload, but also in terms of the kind of people I got to meet through my um, sections. Uh, all of them were from different schools, especially undergrad. And uh, it's been a lot of fun working on projects with them together. Thank you. Any other examples of either classes or experiences uh, outside of SOM? Yeah, um, right now I'm taking a French class and that's been a lot of fun. I haven't taken French since undergrad. So um, definitely been relearning and learning a lot of new things as well. And um, I think that class especially has helped me to meet a lot of um, students in Yale College and um, helped me to get to know like what kinds of things they're interested in, like what they've been worried about during this time. And um, you really get to know people really well that way through a language class, I think. And um, some other activities outside of Yale. Um, I really like going to some of the, the guest lectures that the law school brings in. I think they're always very interesting. And um, law is an area where I also don't have a lot of experience. And so it's um, been a great opportunity to be able to broaden um, my perspectives that way. Great. Thanks so much, Selena. Um, backtracking a little bit, I know um, one of the you know one of the questions that came in had to do with sort of again the reasons for for coming to business school more generally. Um, and as the the uh, participant noted, you 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 you've all had interesting roles with great companies before business school, so. I guess the question was, what weren't you learning in your roles uh, and from your companies that you craved and why business school and why, yes, why Yale SOM to get that experience and knowledge? I guess I can chime in. Um, so with regards to my experience, as I mentioned, um, I, I just worked in finance before business school. So I did have that finance perspective and appreciated that. I think it's a great skill to have, but. Um, just reflecting on like my personal satisfaction and sort of what I saw for myself long term um, in terms of uh, like I personally have this interest in social entrepreneurship from a long term perspective and so um, backtracking with that long term goal is then thinking about the steps that would help me get there and so just having a finance perspective is one element that is successful in, in at, like executing that plan, but it's not the only thing that is required and so for me. Um, I wanted to go to business school for the sake of expanding my, hor my horizons, but more intentionally on a perspectives basis. I felt that I just had that financial perspective, but um, you know, and in SOM specifically, you have, you know, of course it's called the investor, which is exactly what I did um, before business school, but you also have a course uh, in the core called customer, you have SMF, all these different uh, perspectives within an organization that are equally as important to take into account when thinking about the success of the long-term business. Um, so that sustainability aspect and being able to understand what is necessary um, from a, a, a stakeholder perspective to understand um, and also deliver on is extremely important. I think that's ultimately what drove me to business school, but also SOM specifically with the integrated curriculum. Um, and then I think even outside of that, uh, SOM has a very uh, strong presence in strategy courses and I'm finding myself really in that bubble uh, with my electives and I haven't ventured out into the broader um, Yale University sort of uh, opportunity set, but I'm planning to do that through like the law school as well as um, a, a data science course and I'm planning to take in, in the spring. But yeah, I think that's ultimately um, my rationale is to going to business school. Great, thanks so much Ruben. And I uh, really appreciate that answer. Uh, and you do touch, uh, that leads me to another question. You touch on this sort of kind of the perspectives-based approach and broadening sort of that per your perspective and your, your, your sort of mindset. Um, well, another question that came in actually kind of builds on that and, and maybe get some other thoughts on what would you say are some of the strongest transferable skills you gain from the program? Uh, and like love to get some thoughts about that. So just to quickly touch on that um, and then I'll let you know the, my colleagues um, answer and, and expand on, on our, my like, response. Um, I would say the first thing is definitely the frameworks. Um, it's a very structured way of thinking that I did not even 
consider before business school. I never even thought people would think in such a structured way that really helps you not just analyze the situation, but also measure the impact of something. Um, and so I think that was something that's been quite tangible for me, whether that's looking at it from a customer perspective and sort of the cost and benefit trade-off of, of acquiring the customer and looking at that long-term relationship, or whether that's looking at a whole enterprise, thinking about going into a certain market and whether that makes sense, makes sense from an internal resource standpoint and sort of the, their, their network, things of that nature where like you are constantly immersed in this type of environment and way of thinking, and you have to prepare your cases the same way. There are, you know, case um, discussion questions that you have to prepare for and things of that nature. Um, and there's cold calling. So of course you have to be prepared, right? Um, so I think that's all of that really, really adds to um, the way of thinking and, and really making you accountable for, for taking um, these courses, but also the key learnings across everything that's being taught. Great, thank you. Thank you again, Ruben. I don't know if uh, Lok, Selena, Shruti, if, uh, if you have other thoughts about um, that, was those, that transferable skill question. Yes, I could take, um, uh, I could add some thoughts. I feel another very important uh, transferable skill that Yale helps uh, with or has helped me with is uh, being able to uh, succinctly put my thoughts across uh, in the most uh, difficult um, topics that we've been discussing in class. And you know, as part of our class, um, where we uh, do workforce in in the core, we discuss uh, really difficult and uh, I think um, just topics such as gender, wage gap, um, you know, the Israel Palestine, and some of these topics that are so difficult to talk about and so difficult to really put. Uh, your points and thoughts across and being able to voice your concerns in the most succinct, most uh, uh, well-rounded manner is something that I've uh, really learned very uh, strongly uh, through my core experience. Great, thank you, Shruti. Um, that's wonderful. I, I, I'm getting a lots of questions. I'm gonna shift gears a little bit, getting lots of questions about sort of on the career front. Obviously that's an important part of coming to business school is kind of what that, you know, what that looks like on the, on the outgoing side. Um, and lots of students are making pivots or making a, and based, you know, obviously you've talked about the, the, the career paths you're, you all are on and looking to, to undertake. Um, so again, as I said, getting lots of questions, I maybe try and ask something that's a little bit broader, tries to encompass a few different ones. But a little bit, I may guess can, if I can ask, um, you know, if you, if you want to re refresh the audience about what your post MBA career goals are, um, whether they've changed at all, what's influenced them, and how has Yale helped you sort of on that path towards those post MBA aspirations? Yeah, Bruce, I'd like to take that question and um, talk about what I thought when I would enter uh, MBA school and what how am I my post MBA goals have changed ever since I joined Yale. I'd uh, thought of actually pivoting from consulting to investing and actually um, pursuing a career in venture capital back in India. Uh, but there was this class that I took in spring in the first year, which is called, uh, which is with the Yale Center for Customer Insights. It's a six month um, internship of sorts, but very uh, rigorous, very demanding course. Uh, where I was actually pitted to work with one of the biggest soda manufacturers in the world. And we did consumer insights for them. And that's when I realized this is something that I did not know existed. This is something that I did not know I would be good at and decided that I would shift gears from you know, recruiting for venture capital uh, to recruiting for sales and marketing roles um, in some of the biggest consumer product uh, companies. So I, I intend to actually uh, work full time with Unilever um, post MBA. That's great. And do you would you know what what has that? If I could add, sort of drill down a little bit more, what is that sort of recruiting process? Well, obviously the the particular moment. I think probably some of that happened pre COVID uh, for you. But what what does that process look like, and how is how does that work, and and how do you prepare for that 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 uh, that sort? Of very good question, Bruce. And I think uh, uh, we have amazing resources from, uh, you know, all the questions that were actually asked by companies that were, for example, if, if I'm interested in consumer product goods, 
uh, all the companies that fall under the purview of consumer product goods uh, and all the interviews that have happened in the past three to four years, uh, all the questions from those interviews have actually been um, documented in one place and it's, it's a question bank of sorts. So it really helps you uh, think about what kind of questions do actually come in these interviews. Uh, apart from that, we have amazing set of career advisors um, uh, who are second years and they help you go through your resumes, your cover letters. Um, and also the biggest part is actual, actual application and that happens through the Yale um, CMS or the uh, management system where you have all the job listings that come to Yale. And that's an extremely comprehensive list when it comes to sales and marketing across the globe. Uh, so all of these three resources really helped me prepare well for the interviews. Great, thank you so much, Shruti. I think, I think we might've lost luck. Uh, so hopefully he'll jump back on these are the, so the challenges of, of being virtual through Zoom. Um, but I don't know if Selena Rubin, if you have any additional thoughts about uh, your, your searches, uh, how you've gone about sort of the, your, your um, post MBA career planning and kind of how that's, that's unfolded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can jump in. Um, I think originally when I first came to business school, I was very set on um, going into human capital consulting, but um, in speaking with the career advisors and a lot of alumni and um, current students as well, I think I, um, kind of expanded my job search to include not only human capital consulting, but also um, other roles that would provide, um, I guess, similar goals um, that I was reaching for, such as like um, executive search or um, considering also HR rotational programs as well. And being able to talk to alumni really gave me a great idea of what a certain job would be like or what it would look like with the day-to-day -day tasks were. And um, that's very helpful in just considering um, what I wanted my day to look like and what um, made me feel like I was contributing in a way um, to society and to the company as a whole. So um, I definitely recommend to everyone, even if um, um, you're, you know exactly what you wanna do, um, just talking to other people to see what their careers were like as well. And um, even if you decide not to pursue that path, it's always really interesting to hear everybody's stories. Thanks so much. Uh, oh, Ruben, I'll let you. I'll let you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So for, it's mine is very similar to the previous responses. Um, but I think one thing that I would add in terms of just the resources, um, sometimes you know, it, instead of you going and doing active outreach, some of these employers might be coming to you, and that's a function of having a strong brand from Yale. Um, as a result of even the resume book that's being published from the career development office. And so that's actually how I ended up at Apple was them reaching out to me as opposed to me proactively reaching out to them. And then one other thing just regards uh, with regards to um, the overall experience of recruiting, um, even for things that are quite competitive like investment banking and consulting, I think one thing that's so unique about Yale SOM is the way that your fellow classmates still support and help you throughout the process. And so, I mean, I, I till this day, I still remember, you know, Shreethi and I taking the train to go and visit a consulting firm um, and coordinating that and just making like you bond with your classmates over these experiences. But most importantly, everyone has your best interests at heart, even though you're going for the same thing and you're helping each other case, um, whether that's on weekends or late nights and people make the time because they care. And that once again is tied to the mission of the school and the type of people that come to Yale as well. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Ruben. Uh, I'd love to, you know, in someone in that vein, in terms of the community, obviously there's, there's the SOM community on campus, so the students and the faculty, but Selena, in, in, in the context of your answer about your job search, you mentioned, you know, talking to alumni. And I know the alumni, the relationship with alumni and the alumni piece is very important as well. And I'd love to get any additional thoughts about how you've engaged with alumni and how they've been uh, helped shape your SOM experience uh, to now and how you anticipate that happening going forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think initially I was like very scared to just cold outreach to people. And um, I think the CDO was really helpful in pointing out like, oh, um, here are some people who graduated, you know, just last year or two years ago. And um, I think you could or they would relate really well to the types of questions that you're asking currently. And so um, kind of like getting your toes wet there, um, reaching out to people who graduated very recently. And I've always found personally, um, there's like a hundred percent 
response rate. Uh, nobody has ever not replied to me. So that's always really great. And everybody's um, been really helpful, willing to take um, Zoom calls, even before the pandemic as well, um, and to take the time to um, to talk about what their experience was like recruiting, um, if they were um, switching industries or geographic locations, um, what that search was like for them. And um, a lot of people have given great advice on you know, what to do with my resume or my LinkedIn, um, which roles to apply to um, that are offered for internships and full-time roles as well. And um, the alumni network has really been awesome and I couldn't speak more highly of them. Thanks. Thanks so much, Selena. And then here are the thoughts. Uh, we just have a couple of minutes. Any thoughts about sort of that alumni piece and the ways in which alumni have uh, helped shape your experience here at, at SOM? Yes, uh, I think Bruce, with especially my search, I remember going on to Yale's alumni directory and uh, reaching out to people with their current email IDs, uh, using that as a, a method of reaching out to alumni versus reaching them on LinkedIn. And that's the great part of being at Yale and how it curates everyone's, um, every class uh, of graduates are actually on the Yale alumni directory. Um, another thing that the alums really helped with were uh, interviews. They were so hands-on. They said, you know what, I really want you to get through this form and I'm going to help you prepare for it. And uh, they wouldn't think twice be be, you know, before booking time to just interview me for nothing in return for them. So I think uh, that itself speaks uh, uh, a, a lot about the school, about the sense of belonging and something that I hope to carry forward as I graduate. Thank you so much. We have just a couple minutes left uh, and it's gone quickly. Um, I wanna thank you all the panelists again for your participation. Um, there are lots of questions, I apologize. There's so many more questions I wish we could get to. Um, a number of them are, are application related, admissions related. Uh, and obviously this is more about the student experience. I would point people who are on this session, if you're looking to get uh, insider advice on the application process, especially if you're thinking of applying for our next round, the round two deadline, which is our main round um, on January 4th. Uh, we do have a number of sessions, including an application tips panel, which is coming up, I think, um, sometime early next month. Um, so please, you know, just go to our events page and you can sign up for that. And that will be a chance for you to hear directly from uh, the admissions officers about the application and, and how, how to sort of prepare your strongest one uh, for, for um, in general, but especially if you're thinking about that January 4th deadline. Um, but if I could, for each of you, if I could just get one last question, um, I'm going to try and squeeze two questions in, which I apologize um, for being you know, ambitious. Um, just uh, if, if each of you could just give me uh, just a, a thoughts on, um, since you've been at SOM, so one thing that made you say, yes, I made the right choice deciding to come to Yale SOM. And then also, um, obviously, keep in mind that, you know, this is not an admissions session, but um, if you have just one piece of advice for prospective applicants preparing to apply in terms of how you approached it that you thought that would be valuable for people to know. So a little bit of a compound question, but if I could just go around and I guess Selena, we'll start it. We'll start with you. We started with, we started with you the first time. So we'll start with you this last. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I guess one piece of advice is really to um, think about telling your own personal story. That's, um, I think I heard that advice from people um, when I was applying and I think that's really important to make sure that, um, you know, people in the admissions office, like understand who you are and where you're coming from and um, what you would add to the school. And also of course, what you'd be learning and um, taking as well. Thanks so much. And any, any sort of aha moment or any moment where you said, yeah, the, the confirmed yes. that this was the right place I, for you? Yes, I think uh, um, something that Yale really stresses on, and that's what I felt through the application process was, uh, it really cares about who you are as people versus what you may have done in the past uh, and all the degrees and all the great scores that you may have gotten. But I think the bigger inclination is always on who you are as people and that's what should, uh, should speak for you uh, when you write your essays in the application. I would, I would also echo what Tracy just mentioned. Um, I think 
you know, people sometimes think of the application process as a way to, you know, check the box and just like submit something. This is actually, I mean, I feel like taking that perspective is actually cheating yourself out and not the admissions office because this is a very important time of your life where you can make a pivot and it's very introspective. I think you should take the time as to think about, you know, how do you really want to use your next, you know, two years of education to help you transform your experience, whether that's going into a new industry or whether that's, you know, being more, um, superior within your your industry that you're currently in like things of that nature but most importantly think about it from a goal-oriented perspective and i felt like i was part of mlt so we were kind of forced to do this um and this was something that i really valued the entire time during the program um, as i was applying to, to business school and so i think that's definitely a, a piece of advice that i would share with all applicants as well as just being authentic i think being vulnerable and showing who you really are is, is best than trying to fit into, you know, what this specific admissions team is looking for. I mean, I feel like that is is probably, you probably heard that through many, many different um, uh, people and, and outlets, but I think it's, it's worthy of mentioning over and over again, because um, I felt like I was being very vulnerable throughout my entire application, um, wanted them to see who I was as a holistic person and not just a test score, not just, um, you know, one, my my you know work experience i mean those are all things that add to who you are but it's all about being intentional and looking at how you're thinking about those experiences and how that's going to pivot you going forward and i think that is definitely a reflective process that you should invest time in not just for yourself in terms of an application but for your you know long-term success thanks so much Locke. any any last thoughts about sort of advice for prospective applicants? Yeah, just to echo all that, I think the greatest thing, one of the things you need to be able to show is just, A, you're a three-dimensional human being. You're just not the sum of your achievements. There's more to that. There's the process of how you got there um, and what drives you forward. So if you can connect what you've done in the past with what drives you forward, even though they might not be in the same industry or in the same sectors, but the, the same basic values and concepts, you are still there. Um, and also show that introspection that you have, like what have you learned in your past that's gonna drive you forward? Um, and where do you wanna make your impact in the world? And this is definitely the place you wanna to go to, you make an impact, but think about where and think about how. You don't have to have it completely planned out because nobody does really, and it, it might change along the way, but you do have to have fundamental values that are driving and just show show the admissions committee like why, why that is and um, what you plan to do about it. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you all for those those wonderful answers, both those last thoughts, uh, which I am, I'm sure will be helpful to, to the attendees who are thinking about applying, uh, but also just sh sharing your perspectives more generally. Uh, so Selena Rubin, Shruti and, and Locke, I, I really appreciate your time today. Uh, I know you have to, we were just a, a minute or so over. I know you you have other things to get to, and I know that um, the attendees um, uh, have to get on with, the, with your days or end of days as the case may be. So I wanna thank all of you who are participating for, for being part of this session. Uh, hopefully this was helpful, help you give you more of a sense of, of the, the mission, the values, uh, the community here at the Yale School of Management. Please do continue to, to keep in touch with us and stay engaged. As I mentioned, the application tips panels coming up. We have lots of other events coming up as well uh, that, that hopefully will give you more insights into, into the school and that I hope we will take advantage of. So thank you all. Uh, have a great rest of your day and look forward to continuing to be in touch. Bye-bye.